Okay, in this lesson, we are going to explore sound as a wave. So these are the learner's outcome. These are prior knowledge. You need to understand what is sound first, and also you need to concept of waves, like frequency, wavelength, period, and amplitude. Last lesson, we have seen the model of a sound wave transmitting to its surroundings. Sound is a disturbance or a vibration from a source and transmits by passing the disturbance to its surroundings medium, which is usually air. Though it seems that the particles are traveling together with the disturbance, it is actually an illusion. Take note that the medium itself actually does not travel together with the disturbance. It means that though you may be standing far away, you can feel the vibration and sound of a very loud speaker. It is actually not the air that is near the speaker that will travel across with the sound and cause you to feel the vibration. The vibration that you feel is the air that is emitted to you that is always hitting on you. How is that so? The vibration or sound is passed through the air by progressively vibrating the neighboring air layers one after the other. Eventually, the air that is closest to you will vibrate your ear and you will hear the sound. Good news is that it also means that if a person is with a bad breath shouting at you from afar, you can hear him clearly, but you will not smell his bad breath. The shelter only transmits the vibration, which is sound, but not the medium, which is the bad breath. I want you to now compare the model of a sound with a pattern of water ripple that is created by a water droplet. Don't they look very familiar? Similar? Though water ripple and sound may seem very different, the pattern that they create have common features and characteristics. It is because both patterns are form of a wave. Thus, you may have heard of the term sound wave. Let's look at some of the common features between water ripples and sound. What are their similarities? First, they have both a disturbance or a vibration source. Second, this disturbance is transmitted in all directions to its surrounding. Third, as the disturbance spreads out, they form a circular pattern as their traveling speed of the disturbance is seen constant throughout the medium. And what are their differences? The water ripples medium is water, while sound's medium is air. The traveling speed of the disturbance are different for water and air. For air, Sounds travel at a speed of roughly about 330 meters per second, and the water ripple speed is much slower. What is meant in the similarities is that the speed of sound in air is constant in air, which is always 330 meters per second in all directions. That is why the pattern's forms are circular in shape. Lastly, one difference is that the water ripple shown in the, is a transverse wave, while sound is a longitudinal wave. Here are some pictures of a model transverse wave and longitudinal wave. The difference between them is that the transverse wave is a vibrational direction is perpendicular to the direction of the wave travel. And the longitudinal wave is the vibration direction that is parallel to the direction of the wave travel. Notice again that the matter of the wave actually do not move along with the disturbance or the wave that travels right. This shows that actually sound wave transfer disturbance or energy, but do not transfer the matter or medium itself. Let's look at what do we mean by vibration direction and the direction of wave travel. Direction of source vibration is moving left and right. Direction of disturbance of wave travel is towards the right. Another way to look at it is that you see that the disturbance moving towards the right, Thus, the direction of the vibration source are traveling parallel to each other. Let's look at the animation again. You can easily notice that as the wave travels down, there are certain regions that the particles are packed more closely together. They are known as compression. Let's pause the video. So you can see that this particular region, this particular region, okay, and this particular region are known as compression. Okay. 
And in between the compressions, you'll notice that the regions are more widely spaced. So these are known as refractions.